is the matter? I'm gonna check the front of my car. If it smells like ass, I'm gonna beat you like a runaway slave. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is a new series where I will be highlighting top films I recommend you watch from some of our favorite actors, directors, and producers. Today, we are bringing Samuel Leroy Jackson to the front of the congregation. Random fact before we get started. Did you know that Sam only got his first major role at the age of 40 in the Spike Lee joint called Do the Right Thing? Some things to note before embarking on this journey down memory lane. The order of this list is purely based on the timeline of the release of each movie. Hence why movies like Avengers didn't make this list. The list is purely subjective, and I welcome all notes for when I make an updated video on any artist I cover. Lastly, even if it feels like blasphemy, I will be referring to him as Sam throughout this video. Saying Samuel L. Jackson the entire video would be a mouthful. That's what I said, slick back. No, no, it's a pimp named Slickback, like a tribe called Quest. You say the whole thing, a pimp named Slickback. Uh, can we call you Slickback for short? No, nigga, I'm a pimp named Slickback. Hitman's Bodyguard. Sam plays the world's most notorious hitman who is being hunted by a former diabolical associate. He discovers he has been assigned a relentless bodyguard who happens to be someone he's been at odds with throughout his criminal career. Something funny? <laughs> she didn't expose your client. I popped Kurosawa. Shot I made in my entire Hitman career. 300 meters to a firm C cup titty sized window. Pow! Clearly, we take Sam a lot more serious than he takes himself. His chemistry with Ryan Reynolds is spectacular, and it plays out perfectly. Go with God. This man's killed over 150 people. 250, easy. Sunset Limited. This story was a play that gets adapted into a feature film. Well, I ain't do a thing but duck and step back under the rail. And I reached out and I got hold to this table leg. And it come off in my hand just as easy. Had this long screw sticking out the end of it. And I went to wailing. Sam plays an ex-con who saves a retired professor played by Tommy Lee Jones, who attempts to off himself by jumping in front of a train. He brings the teacher back to his place to understand his motives, and this is where the entire movie takes place in. Let's get back to you. Let's stick with you for a minute. This film is uniquely different because it's just the actors and the four walls, no escape, and no place to hide. It's a really immersive film that I don't hear enough about, but I strongly recommend you to watch. I got one hand on the rail, so I ain't going nowhere. But what I don't know is that this dude must have picked up the knife and he's trying to gut me. I felt the blood, I turned around and I bust him in the head and he went skidding off across the floor. Django Unchained. I am burnt out with how many slave movies I've seen in my lifetime. But this is one of my top three on this list. White folk ain't never had a bright idea in their life. It's coming up with all kinds of ways to kill your ass. Samuel's portrayal of a villainous headhouse slave in this movie is top tier. You really grow to hate him in this film because of how believable he is. The chemistry between him and his master played by Leonardo DiCaprio is just amazing. You said you ain't know him. I don't. Why is you lying to me? Some parts of this movie will be heavy for some. However, I think you will find that the comical side creates a perfect balance. I laughed for most of the film. Unthinkable. This movie follows a black ops interrogator who is tasked with extracting bomb locations from a domestic terrorist before they are detonated. The extreme measure he takes to get answers will absolutely blow your mind. Oh my god, oh my god. How could you do this? How 
could you? You wanted proof. I needed a break. I can hold out now. I let myself be caught! Because I'm not a coward! I chose to meet my oppressors! Face to face! Sam, whose character goes by H in this movie, pulls out some truly unthinkable interrogation tactics out his bag. Cancer! How does it feel, Brody? Soul Man. First things first, R.I.P. to the legend Bernie Mac. Good night. Good night. This movie is just straight up comedy. Haven't laughed this hard in a while. No, oh, hey, what the fuck is that? What's wrong? What's wrong? You been taking them dick pills again? I thought it was my cholesterol mess. I swear I did. You can't be spooning with a motherfucker with that. What's wrong with you? Uh, I... You nasty son of a bitch. Give me some cover. I'm sleep on the floor. Shit. Go on and sleep on the floor. Nobody wants you, Lewis. I don't like boy pussy no way. Hope your back hurt like a motherfucker. Better my back than my asshole. Nasty. I'll beat your motherfucker. All them years I spent in prison, ain't nobody roll up on me like that. I was gonna ask you about that. Y'all to be ashamed of your goddamn self. Nasty son of a bitch. Bernie and Sam play Louie and Floyd, who were in a chart topping musical band called The Real Deal. They've been split for 20 years prior after the lead singer of the band, played by John Legend, goes solo. Father, fuck you, man. They gonna tell me 60 30. You can't sing, harm, or motherfucking skip. That a bitch. Skip on these motherfucking nuts. You and Marcus make you rest in shit. Motherfucker, I'm Floyd fucking Henderson. You possum face motherfucker. My name is Lester, the court jester. All you other rap niggas are messed up. I take you to school this semester. 20 years later, they are attempting to bury the hatchet and pull off a comeback. I'm such fan of Sam in comedic roles. He has the perfect humor for it. What? Listen, that bass line right there. Yeah? <laughs> Son of a bitch. The real deal, huh? That's it, that's it. I mean, so what if we jacked your shit, man? Huh? Good artist, borrow. Great artist still, man. You know who said that? Pablo Picasso, but literary scholars sometimes like to attribute it to T.S. Eliot. Hell no, we're no damn M Missy Eliot, man. We are already halfway through, and I want to throw in some honorable mentions that didn't make the list. The Last Days of Tommy Gray. This is a show I am currently watching, and it's truly fantastic. This list is focused on movies, hence why this show isn't on the main list. I might make a list to include shows. Let me know down in the comments if that's something you want. To do it. The Kill Room. This is a more recent film of his that I enjoyed, but honestly, I don't see any film on this list I would replace with this. All Nick Fury roles. Avengers Endgame is probably one of the most complete action movies known to mankind and easily in my top 10 of all time. However, it didn't meet the criteria for a role. I thought Samuel did his best work. His character isn't present enough to add to this list. I can keep going, but let's get back to the list. Lakeview Terrace. This movie evolves around this interracial couple who moves into their starter home to grow their family. Unfortunately for them, they've got Samuel as a neighbor who is a cop and is absolutely against this modern day union. This is sick! Okay, Dad! Let's keep it gangsta! Right. Hello! What? It's okay for you to parade around in your underwear, but not me, huh? You know what that is? That's hypocrisy. That's a double standard. Did you listen to your wife, huh? What? Did you? Stop. You should listen to your wife. Did you see it coming? Shut up. You don't bring my wife into this. When she ran off on you? You leave my wife out Did you see it coming? Don't let her name come out of your mouth. Did you see it coming? You shut up. Go, 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 go. Black Snake Moan. He plays a blues player whose wife recently left him. He finds this white girl played by Christian Rixay, who is beaten up and left for dead along his yard. He clueless how she got there or what was wrong with her. My woman put my black ass out cold. I said, baby, why are you leaving? She said, I love them gone cold. Being in the country and a long way from a hospital, he attempts to nurse her health, unaware of the trauma he would have to deal with as well. Say, hey, girl. Hey. Is you hearing the sound of my voice? Mm -hmm. 
It's okay. The man. Where's the money? I gave it to him. I told him I'd call him with a time and a place, and I walked out. You should have seen it. You gave a half million dollars in cash to some gun running killers? Correct? In this action comedy, Sam plays Derek, an angry undercover cop who tries to set up a sting operation to catch some gun runners he believes are responsible for his partner's death. Feel it! Got a nice weight to it. Yeah, so do you, baby. <laughs> what? Somehow he gets entangled with a nerdy dentist played by Eugene Levy. As serious as we take Samuel L. Jackson, I love it when he takes on these comedic roles. He doesn't even try to be funny, but somehow the shit just work. I will cheese grate your ass through this fence. A time to kill. Ask him if he think I'll go to jail. Carly, they amputated his leg because you shot him. He's a witness for the prosecution. You my lawyer, ain't you? Yeah. Ask him. This movie is very triggering, but highly relevant even today. Now I can tell you all about it, or let Samuel tell you himself in this John C. Tibbetts interview. In A Time to Kill, Samuel L. Jackson's character of Carl Lee Haley is a very, very angry man, and in your words, set it up for us, the predicament you're in. Okay, first of all, let me say that, you know, he's not angry. Um, <laughs> well, it's hardly the word. Well, anger is not what I thought his motivating force was. Uh, he has a 10-year-old daughter who's been uh, raped by these two men and brutally beaten and left for dead, and he doesn't think that the justice system is going to serve him properly, so he takes the law into his own hands. Uh, and because he loves his daughter so much, and he's a parent, and like most of us, we want to protect our children from all these evil things in the world. And this little girl was calling on him, fully expecting him to save her life while these things were going on, and he was not there. So he feels like he failed her. Uh, so his sense of pain and hurt is more or less what drives him to let him know, to, to let his daughter know that he is her protector. Mm -hmm. And this is the length that he will go to to make sure that she is never harmed by these two people again, for sure. And that hopefully he will always be around to make sure she's never harmed like that again. And, and now you're love. facing a white jury. Yeah, and that's love. And that's his predicament. He does that and goes on trial. Check, I, I can't do no life in prison. You gotta get me off. Now, if it's you on trial. It's not me. We're not the same, Carly. Our daughters, Jake, they ain't never gonna play together. Now, what are you talking about? America is a war, and you on the other side. How a black man ever gonna get a fair trial with the enemy on the bench in the jury box, my life in white hands. You, Jake, that's how. Pulp Fiction. Hey, kids. How you boys doing? Hey, keep chilling. Fun fact about Pulp Fiction, Samuel L. Jackson was 45 year old when he played this role. You know what they call a quarter pound of a cheese in France. He plays a supporting character named Jules, who's a religious yet ruthless hitman. You know why they call it that? Uh, because of the metric system? Check out the big brain on bread! For a supporting role, Jules has some of the most quotable lines in TV history. One notable quote is from the Bible verse Ezekiel 25:17, which Tarantino tinkers with the words to best fit Jules' character. If it isn't obvious why this made it on the list, this role makes Sam a bona fide star and rightfully so, and also is in my top three on this list. Mr. Wallace, you, you, when we, we got into this thing with the best intentions, really. I never... Oh, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? Sam had been on about 50 different movies and shows before ever landing this role. 
talk about dedication. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your favorite Samuel L. Jackson movies are down in the comments. Also, I'm actually traveling right now, so hence why I'm not on camera. But while I'm on the road, I'm testing out my AI voice. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments as well. And if you think Sam Curse is too much for you, check out this video I did on profanity on this channel. Catch you in the next one. Peace.